Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Um, I wanted to remind you, if you hear any scraping or scratching or hammers or anything like that, it's because I have painters in my home today and they are painting right outside my door. And so, if you hear anything that sounds like a new sound effect, it's not because I'm enhancing my audio, it's just because we've got painters here today. And so, um, any of that scraping just uh, get you a good laugh out of it because it's just the way this channel works. Um, I, I've got something extremely important, I think, from this is from uh, Bull Run Wonka at Willy Wonka XRP. Now, I've touched on this before, but I don't think I explained it the way it needs to be explained. And, and he hit it right here. Ether is almost full. XRP going to eat that cap up. So what he's talking about here, this is an article that we, he, he's got an article here from Bloomberg Crypto, and I don't have, uh, Bloomberg apparently makes you pay, and so I, I, I've got just enough here to show you. Ethereum almost full as controversial coin gobbles up capacity. The digital ledger behind the supposed better version of Bitcoin is running out of capacity. That was war the warning last week from Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin who noted that the cost of processing transactions done in the digital token, Ether, on the underly underlying blockchain may get too expensive for some users. Okay, this is the freaking founder, folks, okay? Now, let's make, a, make the point here that Willy Wonka is making, and it is such a good point, especially as we go into September, which is when I think a lot of fireworks could start. Um, what, what you've had over the last year or two is bit the bitcoin ethereum and xrp show more or less they've all remained up here xrp and ethereum have basically gone back and forth in market cap uh, not too long ago xrp had taken the number two slot um, and then ethereum took it back but remember those of you that don't know remember ethereum is a smart contract platform what does that mean that means that they are here for the purpose of, of um, tokenization. So let's say we, that's what we've talked about a lot. There's going to be um, there's going to be the tokenization of assets coming. Well, what's going to happen when all of these companies are saying to themselves, "Well, yeah, we, we do want to tokenize an asset." But we're reading from the founder of Ethereum that it's almost full and that it's going to get too expensive. What they're going to do, folks, is they're going to go to better platforms. And do you know what the better platforms are? The only two I know of are supposedly are EOS and Cardano. But Cardano is the one I've been following. And look at this. This, you're looking at a, at a, at poly, this is polymath, okay? These guys it's a company that is set up to tokenize assets. Look, I showed you this a week or so ago. Look who they, Polymesh Initiative with Charles Hoskinson. Do you know who Charles Hoskinson is? Founder of Cardano. He was also the co-founder of Ethereum. He left Ethereum to make it better. The same way that, the, that um, the same way thing that the people that created XRP were trying to do with regard to Bitcoin is they looked at Bitcoin and they knew they could make it better. So XRP is the better version of Bitcoin. It, Cardano is the better version of Ethereum. Those were first generation. And I'm telling you what is about what is about to happen is you're about to see when when these when the competition gets gets heated up and these companies, the people that originally thought Ethereum was the one, they're gonna find out that it's not Ethereum. I think it's going to be Cardano, and the same thing with XRP. XRP, uh, everybody in the next wave is going to find out that it's the one. Um, XRP is going to be the one to rule them all. But um, this is interesting to note. So when this little competition unfolds, watch what happens with Cardano. It's going to come out of nowhere, in my opinion. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm having a little bit of cinnamon coffee here. I love this tweet right here. This is from a guy um, at T-H-A-L-R-A-T-H-A-R. Price of XRP declining for 1.5 plus years now since all-time high, while governments and institutions are hoarding lots and lots at cheap prices over the counter. My opinion, XRP will become a global reserve digital asset in the unforeseeable future. High, this is the part I really like. Highly liquid by nature, scalable to accommodate 7.5 billion people, extremely fast, inexpensive, option to become quantum resistant, zero counterparty risk, potential to severely reduce systemic risk in global economy. This is what the people at, at this is what this is what the people that designed XRP did. They anticipated all of this, and it is the perfect design. XRP is the one. It's the greatest digital asset ever created, and this guy has just hit the nail on the head. All right, um, and next, somebody else that I believe hit the nail on the head earlier than, than a lot of people. Now, I'm not saying he's exactly right. I'm saying that if he's not exactly right, he danced all around the truth that before anyone else did. Um, he's tweeting out Mr. B's, the, we, what we covered yesterday, which was Mr. B's, um, this was about uh, Brad Combs' pre-allocation theory, who believes that a portion or even the majority of XRP being held in escrow by Ripple has already been pre-allocated. 77% believe it has. It's the only thing that makes sense, folks. Now, this is a tweet that Love for Crypto, and you need to give him a follow. He's got a Love for Crypto channel on YouTube as well. Give that a subscribe. These were, this is something he predicted back on July 26, 2018. XRP become, one, XRP becomes the global reserve currency removing the U.S. petrodollar status. Ripple's 55 billion XRP escrow or a large percentage will be signed over to the, the IMF World Bank. XRP becomes the global standard for the exchange of value via IOV Web 3.0. Now this right here, folks, what Brad Combs is saying and what I believe as well is that yes, all of that appears as being in Ripple's escrow and it has Ripple's name beside it, but it's pre-allocated, it's earmarked for the central banks of the world and that's really what this is all about. You got to give a lot of credit to Love for Crypto. That those jokers, I mean, I think it's a group of guys, and they they have done a lot of good research. Um, okay, I'm trying to delete some windows here so we can move along. Do 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 do. All right, that should do it. All right, and and next here, this is from Savvy XRP. Bitcoin was the future once. The future now. Crypto with utility. Newer projects learned from the shortcomings of, B of Bitcoin and advanced the space overall. Nothing against Bitcoin. It's just old tech in comparison to many other cryptocurrencies and digital assets, not just XRP. And he's tweeting out, retweet if you think Bitcoin is the future. Well, I want to give you my take on this. I do not think Bitcoin's going anywhere. I think that Bitcoin is going to be the one the one inferior technology that survives all of this. I think that they're going to get a free inferior technological pass versus all other digital assets. And I believe that it will get that store of value label and they will, they will be successful in getting that. But that's all they will ever be. And I've said that a lot on this channel. And for that reason, I will keep, I will own XRP. I own X, I, I'm sorry, I will own some Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin, XRP, and Cardano, because I think in the next wave, those those are the ones that are going to really go crazy. All right, XRP being number one out of that grouping. Okay, um, next, this is from Chinu Patel at Chinu Patel 29. This is an article, Telegram's 300 million users could soon be trading Bitcoin and crypto despite serious security warning. Sorry, my phone was ringing. Um, and I, I'm not going to get into what their security warning and all that. I just wanted to illustrate the point that Telegram is Telegram users are going to be able to trade Bitcoin and crypto soon. That's the important thing. And next, um, I wanted to go over this. If I can get that Forbes article to go away. All right, here we go. From Cryptopolis. 
Crypto exchanges are becoming better than banks. With negative interest rates around the world, crypto might be the only place to get a positive return. Pension funds, 401k administrations, uh, administrators, insurance companies, and annuities are paying attention. Um, and this is the article about Binance launching a lending service. Now, it's about, it's going to get interesting in this economy with these zero interest rates and everything, zero interest rates. But so I wanted to tell you all, I don't, I don't know that I've ever told you this before. I've covered things from zero hedge. But as we go into all of this, the economy, the traditional economy and traditional finance is going to play a bigger role in all of this because it's going to be, have a great effect on what is coming. One of my favorite, this is one of those financial websites that these guys do not toe the line. They tell the truth. Zero Hedge. If you don't follow them or go to their website, you should at Zero Hedge because when you go through their articles, they're telling you the truth. Preparing for financial ap apocalypse. Insiders are selling 600 million of stock per day. And then they, there's all kinds of great articles that they post here and also on their website. And you definitely need to give them a follow. Now, I wanted to show you this. This made, made me laugh in it, but it also made me almost feel sorry for Western Union. They said in the ne next five years, cross-border payments could reach $240 billion, which means providing seamless transactions for our customers is more important to us than ever. Check out more cross-border payment trends in payments. Now... I wanted to do two things here. I wanted to tell you, I kind of laughed at this, but I was also kind of felt sorry and thought maybe the XRP community needed to kind of back off of giving these guys such a hard time. I wouldn't be surprised if they're not already working with um, with Ripple. And I, I, I also wouldn't be surprised if they don't laugh behind the scenes about this kind of stuff and to to uh, the people at Ripple and say, man, your your community is hardcore. Because in the, in the responses here, it's literally nothing but people throwing XRP in their face, calling them the blockbuster video of this. I mean, it's just, <laughs> they're, they're, here's a sinking ship. I mean, it's pretty awful. Okay, next, I wanted to show you this. The true, this is just a, a tweet that I saw. The true madness is pension funds being forced to invest in assets which will be guaranteed to lose. It is financial vandalism, and the government and central banks need to wake up to this. Um, and what this is about is how pensions are being forced to invest in this joke of negative interest rate bonds. Now, these pension funds, this is going to become a liability, folks. They can't, you can't get away with what's going on. This is exactly what they said here. It's madness, but it, this is the, this term right here should be what leads us into this crisis. Financial vandalism is what this is. And that, that word right there is what will create a collapse because at some point these people are not going to be able to do what they're pulling off right now. Okay, now I wanted to show you this. For those of you that weren't here, all I think all of 2018, this lady right here who is a contributor to Forbes did nothing but write articles to try to bash Ripple and XRP. But I want to show you, this tweet right here shows you exactly the person you're dealing with. This woman has aligned herself with the elites who they view you and me and other average Americans as gum on the bottom of their shoe. And she's paid for, she's acknowledged that she wrote paid for articles um, for Forbes. Um, she gets paid, but she said she doesn't have to tell you who's paying her, of course. And I want you to read the things she's saying. This is Jim Rickards talking to her after one of her tweets. Francis, you're privileging the banks in your definition of saving. When, rate, when rates are zero to negative, savers will take money out of banks and buy gold. How does that help you deploy capital? Besides, banks are not risk-free. Trust me on that. And he's, he's tweeting out her tweet. Look at what she says. And I want you to think while you read this what kind of a a contempt for the average person out there like you and me who want to save money what kind of contempt must she have and and how how far above you and i must she really think she is to talk to you like this or to think this of what your rights are as an average citizen savers have never had any god-given right to positive returns on their savings since most assets depreciate over time positive returns are anomalous and then she goes down here and um 
She says, saving is completely pointless unless the savings are deployed productively to increase income and well-being in the future. If, if all you want to do is sit on, sit on a hoard, then the returns on it should be negative. That's what she thinks of your ability to save. How insulting and sick is that? <laughs> okay, next, I wanted to show you this. Bitcoin price holding 10K level for three months. What they're saying, it says the new normal bottom price for Bitcoin is 10K. And this is um, coming from Nigel Green, the CEO and founder of the financial consultancy firm Devere Group. Looking at its performance this year, I believe that the new normal bottom price for Bitcoin is $10,000. It bounces at this price. If it fluctuates below this level, it shoots back up again. We have seen this in action on Monday when Bitcoin hit 10,500 in a matter of minutes. There's an increasing global acceptance that cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin are not only the future of money, but increasingly the money of today. This will be reflected in Bitcoin's new normal bottom price of $10,000. And finally, I saw something that made me laugh today. This is a tweet from um, at Tracy Lynn 0220. Um, <laughs> it's a funny video. It's got Michael Myers from Halloween walking into a room and he looks around and there's like several guys sitting there with all sorts of different guns. And he sits there and thinks about it for a minute. One of the guys licks the barrel of his gun and then Michael Myers backs out and gently closes the door and as if to say, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you guys. <laughs> I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that that is one funny video I just saw. And by the way, this is not me weighing in. This is not some political statement on guns. I'm not saying anything about anything like that. I just thought it was funny. Thank you for listening.